Well, I mean, it's been busy, but it's all, I think it's been busy, I've been busy for a long time, but uh, obviously a lot of people that probably haven't heard my name before that just watches TV uh, or now more, you know, says hi and reaches out whether I'm on the subway or whether I walk down the street in Chicago, so that's, that's new. Uh, but it's been fun, it's been really fun. I've been cooking uh, for a long time and, and uh, it's nice to be recognized by people maybe outside the regular food industry. Well, I think Chicago is an incredible food town and that's what, one of the reasons why I want to come to Chicago. For, you know, it's been for generations. When I lived in Europe, I read about Charlie Trotter 15, 20 years ago and I thought that was amazing to have such a commitment to food in the Midwest. And that inspired me to come here. Rick Bayless, of course, was fantastic Mexican-American uh, food. And then also with everything that's happening besides that, the ethnic food and what the guys over at um, you know, Blackbird and, and, and uh, so on is doing and what uh, Grant is doing. So it's generations of chefs for a long time. So I felt like that would be fun to be part of that. You know? So I, I would say my best meal ever in Chicago is probably 10 years ago uh, at Arun. I, I just think I never experienced Thai food that elegant, you know, with, um, you know, it, it was reminiscent of being in Thailand, but also a flair to it that I've never seen to Thai food. And I, I, I just never, I've never seen ethnic food on that level before and just blew me away. Maybe it helped that I went with Charlie Trotter and Fran Adria as well. Maybe that helped me. So you really want to make sure there's four different spots on the grill. Super high over here and then I just turn it off over here. Why do I do that? Well, that it really allows me to go in any direction, right? I can start something off here, and I can slowly move it over to the slow side. It's just not all about the power. I would recommend first get the grill really, really hot, then season it a little bit, and then you turn the side of it off, so you can let it, the meat or the fish rest over here and start it off over here, right? That's one thing, and also on the grill, you can do, like today, we're going to barbecue desserts, pizzas. You can do puff pastry, put them straight on the grill, and you can do that. It does not have to be only meat. You know, like Nicole, she loves the farmer's market. She's very committed and passionate about the farmer's market. She puts in all the great greens and puts them straight on the grill. And I think you can utilize the barbecue uh, in any cuisine, whatever cuisine you, you really have passion for. Burgers comes down to a couple of things. You want to have really good meat-bun ratio, right? And you want to have a great bun and great meat. So we start with the beef that we use, we call it a 70-30 blend. So it means a 30% fat, 70% beef meat. That's and a that, lot of fat. Yeah, but that's the only way for it to stay juicy, you know? And also, so the other way to compensate on that is that we don't make the burgers too big, right? And we go to a lot of different options. You can have a turkey burger one day. We always have a special, that could be a lamb burger. Uh, we always have a chicken burger, we always have a fish burger. Second thing is the vegetable that we put on in it. Same vegetables that we buy here, you know, great tomatoes, fresh salads, everything is homemade, the ketchup is homemade. Third is the bun, potato bun. It's a wonderful potato bun, which will make that burger so good. On the perfect burger, I would love to have great potato bun toasted in butter, turn off. Then maybe a nice green fried tomato, then maybe my aioli is made with a wonderful blue cheese, have some caramelized onion, wonderful piece of about six ounce uh, beef burger, and then fried egg on top. That's a perfect burger. I am a huge soccer fan. I'm so pissed off what happened last night, but I think the Americans did a great job, and I think soccer is not only becoming great, but it just shows that Americans can do really good at the World Cup. I think that we should be really proud of what they did. What's your prediction now for the finals? I think it's going to come down to Brazil, Germany. I think the uh, Brasileiro, I think our boys from Sao Paulo is going to take it in the end.